<laughs> anyway, uh, what, what um, do you have a, a favorite show memory? Favorite show memory? Uh, yeah, you know, I played a uh, House of Blues in Anaheim, nice in downtown Disney, and that was great, man. And uh, I actually got some panties on stage at, at, at Disney. <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene, the people that make it, including me and my guest. And I met my guest at So Belly Barbecue's Songwriter Showcase hosted by Hal Savar, which if you've watched this video or this channel for any amount of time, you know that I'm live streaming there and uh, doing reviews there every Sunday, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's an awesome time. You should swing by or jump on the live stream. Just, uh, you know, subscribe and you'll be notified when a live stream happens. I met him because he performed and it was awesome. And I guess the best way to describe him is blues singer and songwriter in the style of Jared James Nichols and Joe Bonamassa. Big shoes to fill. Oh, yeah. His Instagram is full of spoiled dogs, a cat that thinks it's a guitar, a creationist dinosaur, and a snake he's ridden through a park. Please welcome to the channel, Bert Django. Say hi. How are you guys doing tonight? They're not going to answer you, man. They're not going to answer. <laughs> I'm used to playing live. Go ahead and answer in the comments. There you go. So... First of all, welcome to Room 6. This, changing it up, we're not doing black rum. Grappa. We're doing grappa, so we will be sipping this. Okay. You can shoot it if you want, you just hate yourself. Mm. Smooth! Yeah! <laughs> so this is a Moscato grappa, oh, okay. and it's definitely sweeter and a little more floral. It's all, <laughs> my family <laughs> thinks it's like drinking perfume. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to And then we have some lovely Room 6 whiskey to chase it. Oh, yeah. Mm. So, that being said, uh, thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, man. Before Thanks I get time. into the, the weird, you know, deep dive <laughs> stuff, questions, man. I want to ask you some of my usual questions I ask all my prey. Starting with, let's talk musical influences. I Now, hearing you perform, Elvis is in there a little bit, or Rockabilly in general, but what is that earliest musical influence that you were like, I want to do that? Do you remember? Uh, was there a moment or a song or? A... Uh, yeah, you know the Beatles was great. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I had a like a CD of uh, the White Album growing up, and uh, I just remember listening to that like every night before going to bed. I had the headphones in on the White Album, trippy stuff, man. Uh, Pink Floyd too. I just remember going on hikes and listening to Pink Floyd at night. Really? I don't hear Pink Floyd in your music. But yeah, it's been a while. I'll get back to the, I mean, the trippy stuff. Yeah, the granted, psychedelic. by yourself on acoustic guitar, it's kind of hard to... Yeah. But uh, you actually have um, a website, a merch store, and you have you have an album out now? Uh, not not yet. Oh, you're working on it. That's I'm working right. on an That's acoustic right. album right now. Um, yeah, I was in a, a few different bands back in the day. But... Yeah, weren't we all? Yeah. Uh, so. Definitely make sure that you, when you're done watching this video... Down in the description, I've got all his social media uh, stuff, where to you know follow him and, and keep track of what he's doing. Also, stick around. Upstairs, we're going to be seeing a uh, performance by him of a uh, new song. Yeah. His new song, which new song. we won't we won't tell you, won't spoil the, the name yet, but definitely stick around. Uh, I won't go so far as to say it's a Room 6 exclusive, but... <laughs> <laughs> exclusive Room 6! Because I know you played it at Soul Belly, didn't you? It's on Soul Belly. Yeah, I yeah. did play it. Thanks for remembering, man. Uh, no worries. Um, by the way, nice mug! Oh yeah, that's a great mug, man. This just in. You can show your support for Room 6 by going to room6.shop after this video. We have tons of merch, including discounted cold weather merch and more. Whatever you need to show your support for local music and Room 6 is there, from shirts to hoodies to mugs to posters to stickers. Whether showing off that you're a patron on our Patreon page with our Two Brains One Bottle shirt, or reminding people to just be amazing. Room6.shop has what you need to be a friend of the channel. Thanks for supporting Room 6. Merch, merch, merch. Gotta love it. You gotta buy stuff, man. Yes. Support a singer. Groupies ain't cheap, you know. <laughs> I actually have a line where it's all like, support a guitarist, strings ain't cheap. Support a bass player. Uh, oh, or no, uh, support a bass player, strings ain't cheap. Because, you know, bass strings are like a couple hundred bucks or something crazy. Right? Um, support a drummer. Uh, uh, yeah. It was a sport of drummer, sticks ain't cheap. <laughs> but yeah. They're always breaking them, drummers. Yeah, I tell you, man. Why are they hitting so hard? Do, 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 do. I used to ask a question like, what's your dream gear? What's that dream oh, gear? And, yeah. and the, I heard, the two best answers I got was 
unlimited budget for gear, and a roadie. <laughs> roadie like, yeah, would be nice. Roadie would be nice. So, um, so Beatles and you know, pickle, classic rock classic and, and rock, stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, on my own, you know, like uh, that was like you know, my parents were listening to the Beatles. My mom loves the Beatles. Dad loves Elvis. So I always had mm. that in the car. But then on my own, I started getting more like the the heavy metal. The mega death. They got the hair for it, so yeah, that's why I got still got the '80s hair. Man. And yet, you're not into the metal scene here in town, right? I should get into it, but yeah, I need like a band. But uh, the acoustic's good. You no, know? I just meant like going to metal shows and stuff. Uh, no, I went. I saw Judas Priest not too long ago. I would say, but uh, yeah, no, uh, no local stuff. Right on. But. So, can we talk about the Orange Pickers? Yeah, please. Um, well, what is the Orange Pickers? Oh, well, it was a band I was in um, a few years back. And how would you describe them compared to what you currently do? That do? was more of the, like the, the three-piece classic rock uh, power trio, like Cream or uh, Jimmy Hendrix Experience, you know. Uh, definitely love to get back into that. Like so. Stoner Rock? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of, uh, a lot of marijuana was involved. Nice. In the making of those records. <laughs> it's legal. It's okay. It's legal now, yeah. Don't do drugs. Anyway. Um, I forget sometimes. You forget. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still the cop with outside. What was it Marilyn Manson said? I don't like the drugs, but the drugs like me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Whiskey. Mm. That sounds great, man. He's, mm. he's got the whiskey stone in here. I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah, whiskey stones. I'll show you the whiskey if you, stone. If you, if you drink, if you like whiskey or actually any alcohol really, and on the rocks, <clears> look into whiskey. Look into uh, ice balls. They're they're awesome. I like my balls nice and cold. <laughs> yeah. Nice and shrill. Good night, folks. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> How's the uh, shadow puppetry going? Shadow puppetry cone. Going. Going. Yeah. I have shadow puppets. Yeah. Oh, you, you, you posted some stuff about I did. shadow shadow puppetry. Oh, you know, yeah. I used to do it, you know, I used to work at a camp, you know, back in high school. Right on. And so, yeah, there's, you could do it on the tent. <laughs> Frogs mm. and rabbits and nice. <clears throat> all kinds of shit. That's been forever, man. That's funny. Yeah, well, that's what I do. So, uh, my first job ever was actually uh, the kitchen staff at a Boy Scout summer camp. Oh, shit. I worked in the kitchen, too. For like, a before any sort of fast food or whatever, and I, did, I did 10 years in the food industry, but that was the first job where I'm like, I have to get up, and I have, people are counting on me to be there. I'm you getting paid. Like, yeah, crack like 300 eggs yeah. and shit. And yeah. I get to sleep in a tent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it was, it was weird because you're at summer camp, but you're not at summer camp, you know? Yeah, so it, 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 it was the first time where I'd, I'd gone to summer camp where I wasn't like, okay, what am I going to do? Or what badges am you know, I going to go for? Or whatever. It was, I get up, I go to work, I, and when I'm done, we, we hang out or whatever. Um, you still, <laughs> you still hiding your rum in the breakfast sandwich box? <laughs> you know those roommates, yeah, man. Uh, oh, that's why you were doing it? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was like I could hide it from the, from the family. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea too. Yeah, I live with my brother now, so yeah. That's why I do these interviews, just so I have an excuse to have alcohol in the house. Yeah, right. She's Thanks, like, man. <laughs> it's for the interviews. Mm, yeah, it's for the guest. I swear. That's why you can drink so much. No, I every night. I also do whiskey reviews on the channel occasionally, and and it's an excuse for me to be like, I haven't tried that one, and I can afford it. Let's go for it. So yeah, if you're in, into whiskey reviews at all. Definitely checked out. I've got a playlist of, of Room 6 reviews, and they're, you'll see them in there. Um, they're fun. I like them. That sounds fun to me, man. Invite me over for the next one. Shit. <laughs> um, you ever had a Glenn Marini? Of course. Oh, shit. Glenn Marini. That's like the only fancy one I know. Yeah. Oh, I man. There, there's. I haven't had like the real, like the $200 bottle ones. Yeah. I haven't had those, but um, I... Total wine, man. I, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, right now. And the minis. I always yeah. look at the minis, yeah, that's and, what I get and every now and then there's something where I'm like, I that's something I'm willing to try, but I don't want a whole bottle in case I don't like it. Which, but like, I always like it. You know, yeah, right. If it's Glen Morangi, it's always pretty good. Right on. They should sponsor me. I'll play guitar for <laughs> Glen <Sponsor Marangi>. me. <laughs> Evan Williams. Evan Williams, sponsor sponsor me, please. I, I would love it. You know, even Evan Williams. Yeah. Oh, I love Evan Williams. It, I just. Currently out. I, I drank it all. I will not drink Evan Williams straight, though. I'll admit. You gotta put some Coca Cola in there. <laughs> I invite you into my home? <laughs> this I'll drink straight. This is good, man. Yeah, this is. You can't see what this is? or Sure, it's Kirkland brand. It's oh, Costco 80% blended scotch whiskey. It is this Tuesday good, night man. whiskey. It's, it's just every night. It's really good. 
I, 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 it's good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, I'm surprised how smooth it is. You know. To whiskey. Yeah. Just it's got it just a. On ice. It's got just a touch, just a touch of smoke in there. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm okay with that. I hate the whiskeys that are like challenging you to like them. You know, when like, here, we're going to smack you up the face with some seawater, figure yeah, out the rest, I'm or, you know, oh, it's some driftwood. It, yeah, yeah, or, or here, here's a whole bunch of orange peel. Now, <laughs> see what else you can find. So, that's fun. Yeah. Getting back to music. Oh, yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I could talk about whiskey all day, too. Huh? Right on. <laughs> I could drink whiskey all day. Hey, oh, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> we talked about earliest musical influence. Okay. I wanted to talk about. How long have you been playing as Bert Django? Um, so I had the name for a while, uh, but I never really used it professionally. Well, I mean, so, wait, so that's not your given name? That's not your actual... No. I, I didn't realize. I thought that was just a, your, your born name. I, that's what's good. It's like yeah. you've had it your whole life. But, yeah. Okay, you know. cool. So then, in that case, how long have you been Bert Django? Uh, about 10 years now. Well, All right. uh, longer than that, probably. But yeah, 12 years, maybe. Um, and how long have you been in Vegas? About uh, two years now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Well then, that leads me to the question of, have you been doing a lot of shows in town uh, over the couple starting, years? Starting to pick up, yeah. Recently, All right. Yeah, so I actually work at Amazon right now, and uh, I drive the forklift. Nice. It's pretty sick. Uh, it's like a operational picker. I don't know if you ever see it's those things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You see those things? They shoot up? I work in a warehouse, actually. Oh, uh, sure. I, I do IT and tech stuff for oh, a warehouse, sure. um, and so I'm constantly... like constantly uh making sure that you know everything's working right and uh, uh and just yesterday actually i was checking somebody's uh pit uh safety pre- uh, oh, checklist yeah. yeah yeah i always get in trouble man yeah. you gotta wear the safety do you do your safety stuff don't yeah. don't it, it, it matters it does matter it takes yeah. it only takes one second to completely ruin everything um we had somebody who tangent so we had somebody was on the other side of a rack and there was a pallet that was just like one one board was cracked or whatever, and they were putting something on the other hand. It bulked that pallet, and every and it fell down on the other side. Unfortunately, nobody got hurt, but it was a lesson. And so suddenly there was a meeting. <laughs> yeah, all kinds of. <laughs> but it was a lesson. Like if you hear a forklift anywhere, mm-hmm. on the other side of a rack or you know near you, stop what you're doing, and and pay attention, because you know we we have like walkways now that say pedestrian traffic. And it's kind of ridiculous because I'm like, I can see the forklift, but it also is, but you're no, busy, you're running around, like we're not allowed to have earbuds in anymore and that kind of yeah, stuff. So that sucks, man. Getting back to music, which I know I said we were going <laughs> to So. I know. But, uh, so you, talk about my question to you then is, what's your favorite show memory of performing? In, in any of the bands or whatever, do you have a memory that just stands out like, that was crazy or that ticks off a rock star checklist moment or, you know, oh, can't yeah. somebody went to jail or, or, you know, whatever. I've never been to jail. But so. what is the, uh, I can't, I can't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, what, what, um, do you have a, a favorite show memory? Favorite show memory? Uh, yeah, you know, I played a House of Blues in Anaheim. Nice. In downtown Disney. And that was great, man. And uh, I actually got some panties on stage. At, at Disney? Yeah. <laughs> I, I do know so that, that I, I like I, I know the stage you're talking about. Yeah. Or one stage. And I know yeah. that and in I, downtown Disney, the drinks flow and people get kind of crazy because the downtown kids Disney. are, you know, somewhere else or whatever. They're in bed already. Yeah, yeah. Or you know, they're with someone else riding oh, on yeah. the rides. So yeah, that's cr- that's pretty good. So that's why you know you do a decent show, you know, you get some panties. At Disney. Thrown at you at Disney. Probably married some, panties. Some <laughs> married Disney panties. Mickey Mouse on. Oh, did, really? <laughs> Because that'd be hilarious. That would I be just fun. bought these here. Yeah. What were you playing? Um, well, I mean, what, was, what, what band was this? That was with the Orange Pickers. Covers? Obviously, no, Disney. originals. At Disney? Yeah. They, Surprising. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't cuss on my, my music that way. I can no, 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 I just mean, room. like, I would have thought Disney would have covers. Well, it was at the House of Blues, so, in downtown Disney, so. Oh, yeah, so yeah, 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 still, yeah. You know, you I'm sorry, away. I'm thinking... I haven't been in the. Down- I, I know. I know where the House of Blues is in downtown Disney. I haven't been in there. It's always like, well, I'm go go to the one at home. I played the one at home. <laughs> I played the one here. But uh, I was thinking it was that outdoor stage, one of the that outdoor stages cool they have. But, yeah, uh, but no, 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 House of Blues. That's awesome, man. Um, do they? Was the sound like it is here, where there's there's a sound person out front <laughs> and there's a sound person on the side of the stage as well? Uh huh. Yeah. 
Isn't that awesome? Yeah. You can hear everything. Dude, they have the, the best sound, man. Oh, I love it. Crazy. Yeah, it's that's crazy. So that's cute. one of my best, my my favorite show memories is playing House of Blues. I know, right? Mostly because, number one, my wife never goes to shows. She's hospital allergic to pot smoke. So mm. she doesn't go to shows here. Yeah, don't you go know. to House of Blues. Yeah, right. <laughs> but she was there. And my, my band was the opening act. She was there with friends, which is the other criteria. Like, I need to know somebody there, you know? And it was so awesome to be like, I'm at House of Blues. I'm playing the big stage. My wife is there with our friends. They're seeing me play. They've never seen me play because, you know, you don't uh, come down to the dive bar. You know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like everyone comes to yeah. the House and, of Blues. But also, it was amazing because uh, the green rooms were legit. And some kid in the front row, like, I say kid, maybe maybe 20, probably not. Some, some little, little, you know, young kid. I get done playing and he goes, hey, can I have your pick? Nice. And I'm like, check that off the little rock star list. I'm like, nice. yeah, kid, there you go. Come to find out he did that with every, every freaking guitar player and all the other He's bands. Got... I was like, that's some of it. He's just hedging his bets in case one of us makes it. Never has to buy picks. Yeah, right. But it was <clears throat> it was cool. Um, so House of Blues, Anna, or Disney, that's a cool, cool uh, show memory. What's your favorite Vegas venue for local music, for live music? That's a great question, man. Uh, you know, so, you know, I've been working a lot, so I haven't been going out too much, but, um, you know, Planet Hollywood has a, what's that place, a rock bar? That's a pretty cool Wait. spot. Oh, rock bar, not rock star bar. Rock star bar is cool, too. It's weird, isn't it? It's in a golf place. Yeah, but... Uh, if, if, I did cool. a review of rock star bar here, and it's inside Las Vegas Golf Center, and it's, it's actually a legit club. Like you walk in, you're like, this feels like any other rock, rock and roll, you know, club. And and the so, sound is great. Yeah. And by the way, you can walk out that door and hit a bucket of balls at a van. Yeah. <laughs> I'm down for that too. Man. But uh, rock bar, I haven't been there yet. It's um, cool, man. I saw. Totally I always thought it was there. all cover stuff. Or, or yeah, like, it's mostly cover stuff. Mm -hmm. But they they'll have, they'll have originals night maybe on a Tuesday or some shit. Well, of know? course. <laughs> Good old Tuesday night or Wednesday night. Yeah. Try to get try to get people to come see you because yeah. I got to work in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've been very fortunate as a musician to uh, get by playing covers. You know, it's like a, or well, not that's covers, what this uh, originals. Oh. My bad. It's the whiskey talking. Hey. But uh, yeah, I've been getting by. You know, playing originals, which is really cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's unusual for a musician. You know. Yeah. But um, you know, you know, my songs are you know more family friendly. They're not. I don't like cuss. So it's not like heavy metal or something. That's what I just try to do with the acoustic stuff. Right, and uh, I can get by kind of. And uh, honestly, I'm w when I write lyrics, I tend to be the same way. Uh, I the strongest I get is damn, damn, you know? yeah, yeah, or, you know, or hell. But uh, it's not. I think it's because I'm not uh, of the the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, so. I'm not trying to. I don't I'm know. not. A, I'm not afraid of it, but at the same time. Yeah, uh, I have a, you know a couple songs, but you know it's like you gotta choose the venue. You know, it's like I can get away with this here, uh -huh. but during the day, a, you know, you know if you're playing somewhere family friendly at a restaurant or some shit, you know, a lot yeah. of a lot of musicians, you know, you just gotta take what you gotta get. You know, sometimes yeah, you yeah, play at a restaurant, you know, you make a lot of good money sometimes. Yeah, one of the there, there's pros and cons to being a musician in in, in Vegas in the Vegas general area. And learn, yeah. number one is it's oversaturated. There's a ton of people that any venue can call at any moment. And so it's really hard to carve out a spot for yourself saying, yeah. we make, this is how much we get paid, you know? And on the <laughs> flip side of that, if you go anywhere out of town, they take great care of you. Yeah. I know, I know many acts are like, oh, as soon as we went on tour, even if it was just like, we went to California for you know, Southern California for a couple of days, they come back with money after expenses, after, like money in their pocket, after expenses, made new fans. But it's the initial outlay. You got to get there. You got to, you know, set everything yeah. up. Um, you lose a lot of money driving and hotel rooms. Nowadays, especially. But yeah, you, um, a lot, or you, you, you crash on people, you know. I never, I never really got the chance to do the tour thing. Nice. And um, I just. I lost a lot of money. Yeah. Trashing hotel rooms. That's I nice. always, I, I always <laughs> wanted to. But I came, to, I came to music at a time where I was old enough and had enough responsibilities. <laughs> I was like, well, I can't sleep in my car anymore. And I can't like, you know, 
Yeah. Just say, sure. all right, work. Mm -hmm. I'm going away for two months and going on tour. Yeah. So. And oh, by the way, can anybody put me up for a night? <laughs> yeah, I remember just going to Motel Six and we'd be drinking beers and we just slam them against the wall. We don't give a fuck, and we just leave all the beers open there. And... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we would just trash the fuck out of every hotel suit. That reminds me of a Simpsons episode. Did you, you watch the Simpsons much? Oh yeah. You yeah. know where the the yeah. Mary Poppins character comes in? Okay, He's all, no. I'm playing. I am playing a game. Maybe it's called Huck and Cupcakes. He's hucking cupcakes at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, I'll probably put that in. But um, there you go. Yes, got a little copyright. Thing. I love Simpsons. You can't say Simpsons. No, wow! Well, you, you never know. You never know with YouTube. Know. You never know. Yeah, copyright so, laws are so complicated, man. It's a big ass book. Right. So a long ass PDF file. Another question for you, if you're ready. Oh no, right. wait, wait, wait. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Interview juice. <clears throat> yeah. So I feel more confident now. So currently, you're just playing solo <laughs> around town. Right. Any? Are you looking to get into any sort of band situation? Yeah, you know, uh, it's all kinds of great musicians, man. And I'm getting like business cards. I don't know. business cards. Who does that? I don't. Know. I don't I mean, have business cards anymore. Yeah, giving me shit, and it's uh, like, oh, I, I have QR codes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, um, the, the, it's on the back now. The you know QR what? Codes. If you're a musician, hit him up. If you're interested in you know getting into some sort of a project with him, uh, by all means, social media is down in the description. So, a couple more questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're almost done. Yeah. No, no, no. no. More questions, man. <laughs> Where were you the night? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I wanted to talk gear. I saw you playing that Breed Love. Yeah, let's talk about the Breed Love. Yeah, he's going to be playing a Breed Love upstairs. It's it's really nice. So, when you show up to play, is that the only guitar you're rocking right now? Or do you, what, what gear do you, do you bring? Do you pay pedals? Do you, what do you do? So, yeah, in a band situation, uh, yeah, no, you, no, right now. Right now, just a Burt Django. Um, yeah, I just have a, I have an Epiphone too. It's a Epiphony. It's a, it's a Epiphony. Burt, yeah, Epiphone. <laughs> it is Greek though. The guy was Greek. Was he really? Yeah, he huh. was a, He learned from his dad. It, yeah, and his name is something like that. Yeah, it sounded pretty similar. Epiphony. Anyway, um, but yeah, I have an Epiphone. It's a. You ever watch Hard Day's Night, Beatles? Yeah. Black and white. Yeah, it's the the John Lennon guitar. Yeah. With the knobs. With the nabs, yeah. With the nabs. Yeah, and it plugs in. So it's a, it's a vintage uh, reissue. Uh, it's like a replica. It's, it's so cool. It sounds so right good. On. So I have that one as a backup, but right now it's uh, out of commission. I don't want to fuck. Well, uh, now, at the showcase, you played the Breed Love, right? But I play the Breed Love. Uh, yeah. That's my main guitar, yeah. But uh, if that one, for some reason, has to fucks up, I got the extra one. Right on. But um, yeah, the Breed Love, one of my favorite guitars. I was going in, I went to Sam Ash. And, uh, man, there's this guy, uh, I forget his name, Marcin Music. Mm. I think that's his Instagram. Really good guitar player, influence of mine. Um, he does, like, that kind of slapping stuff that I like, you know. Oh, right. Like, does he do, of, does he do also do all the, the yeah, tapping up the here? Those, those guys that, like, you're looking at him playing an acoustic, you're like, what am I doing with my instrument? Like, yeah. I can't do that. That's, like, the first time I heard Jared James. We're going on Les Pauls now, but, you know, he has a, a Les Paul uh, Epiphone. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I had the same one. I'm like, I can't do that. And, yeah. going, mm. and then I was like, and I go to try it. I'm like, oh, all right, maybe I can. So it, it's very humbling when when someone borrows one of my guitars and makes it sound amazing upstairs in room six, and I'm just like, well, thanks. Now I got to practice more. Mm -hmm. I thought I was I thought I was happy. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I heard Jerry Jane. I was like, if I bend my guitar like that, it's gonna break. Like, <laughs> and I tried it out, and hey, so mm. shout out to Jerry James for showing me. More stuff. It'll take it. It, it can take <laughs> it. She can take it. Right on. Um, last so, question. Okay. You, you made it. Yay. Let's pretend we're talking to Little Bert, okay? We talked about earliest musical influence. Let's talk to new musicians, to that, that person who's like, I want to get into music. I want to, you know, go down this twisted dark road. And, and what is one thing you mm. wish someone had told you about doing, you know, being in, in music? Um, tell them. Tell them. Preach. You know, learn a bunch of different songs. You know, don't be ashamed to play covers mm. and imitate, you know, your idols. You know, um, it's a great way to, to just learn, you know, because you can learn a song and you can just take it your own way. Eventually, you're going to find your own path. But it's, you know, learn, a, learn as much music as you can, every different style, genre. There's like so much different things to learn. And just don't be ashamed, you know, 
go out there and just play a show, play an open mic. You know, you're going to suck. You know, it takes a lot of time to get good, so just fucking put the time in. And, uh, you know, if you really love doing it, you're going to keep at it, you know. And don't be ashamed to do other art, too. Fucking draw, paint, do other shit, too. You know, don't just play guitar. You know, because that shit gets boring. You know, I, I do other stuff sometimes. But, Couldn't say it better. Just, you know, whatever it is, don't be, you know, stay creative and don't be afraid to be creative. Um, there's, there's, it's so easy to fall into the imposter syndrome. You know, no one's going to like what I do, so why bother kind of thing. Yeah. Do it for you. Yeah. Worry about everything else later. Do it for you. Okay. When I make, when I do these videos, when especially when I do my solo stuff, every, every week, once a week, I, I have to fight my way through that every week of, why bother? You know, so, you know, especially when a video doesn't get that many views or, you know, the subscriber account hasn't gone up or it goes down by one. Right. It's like, why keep going? <laughs> yeah. It's, but the point yeah, is why, remember why you're doing it. You're doing it for you. Now me, I'm doing this for the local scene for such as people such as Bert. And, and I get a lot of love from the local scene for it. I, I just got asked today if I wanted to go hang out tomorrow at, at somebody's show. By hang out, they mean go do a review. I I, I know how. <laughs> but the point is, I, I'm i more in the scene now because I'm doing this, I'm doing what I love, which is I love making content, than when I was in a band. Always trying to like, you know, scramble for the next gig. You do you. Don't be afraid of being creative. Because it, it, it one way or another, you're going to find your way. So... Um, we're gonna hit. We're gonna go upstairs now, Sounds and good. see Bert uh, play some amazing music. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for being on the channel. Oh yeah, man, anytime. Clink. And remember to be amazing. And uh, we'll see you for the outro after the after the song. Okay. So uh, I guess temporarily. See you upstairs. Hi, I'm Bert Django. This is a song I wrote called "All I Want Is the Truth." Take your hand, dear, and follow where I go. Throw away all those set stock plans to wonder the unknown. So all I want is the truth. hand there sits and stands a view that feels their way No, I don't think I'm the only one on words and empty sayings No, all I want is the truth in my mind yeah. oh. 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 Oh.
I want to thank Bert Django for coming on the show. It was a great interview and a great performance. If you want to know more about him, click the links down in the description for his social media. If you'd like to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address down in the description or the Room 6 social media link. That's also where you can find ways to support the channel, such as room6.shop, my own two CDs I've got out, or how about become a patron on my Patreon page for as little as a dollar a month. You get patron-only content, and it all helps to make better videos and goes to support the local scene with things like the Room 6 Rocks showcases that I put out a couple times a year, hopefully, if I can, you know, get enough support to uh, pay the bands. In the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you'd like to subscribe, you know what to do. Click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing, and we will see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, Bert. Have a good night. Ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba. Cheesy. Mm -hmm. <laughs>